Fantasy Sad Sacks Anonymous. Wait, Fantasy Sports Addicts Anonymous. That's a different meeting, Tom. I I don't I, I gotta go to so I, many <laughs> I gotta go to so many meetings I can't even keep them straight. But anyways That's all you do is go to meetings. I am a, a meetings man now. Uh Fantasy Sports Addicts Anonymous. This is the one I'm at. My name is Tom. And I Hi, am, Tom. I am a fantasy sports addict a sad sack and i've also now a never nude okay i didn't know that but i appreciate it yeah uh my name is ryan howdy ryan howdy and i too am a fantasy sports addict even though i'm not a sad sack uh i'm actually walking on sunshine whoa, whoa. why uh why are you walking on sunshine ryan tell us about that uh, well, I mean, you know, this weekend, ha- Halloween, uh, you know, I had the weekend off, which is always good. Yeah. And I saw the Book of Mormon, which was fucking hilarious. I bet. Uh, Halloween, I went to a party, uh, had a good time, uh, I was actually the designated driver, so I only had a few beers. A few wait. Isn't the point of being designated driver that you don't drink at all in case there's like a DUI checkpoint or something? No, it's just drinking enough to where you can still pass the DUI checkpoint. Okay, all right. I always thought the DD just didn't even drink, but I don't know. Not if you're you're like me. It, it was basically a race between the wife and I to who was going to drink more quicker and then she played the second game of beer pong and then oh. so I called it and stopped drinking. Okay, nice. So that was fun, but then I'm also super excited because Fallout 4 is coming out in oh. less than a week. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. I already have my, my pre-order digital download. I got to just like preload and I'm ready to go unlock. So super excited for that. All right, that's next Tuesday, right? Yeah. Yeah, so Monday night, essentially. <laughs> well, that's that's a more exciting next Tuesday than I got. Jesus. So, yeah, I got that, that Monday and that Tuesday off, and I might even take Wednesday off of work and just get a marathon session in. You better. You better have me in on that. I want to see what's up with this game. But before, before I get involved in that, I got to go make sure I'm not dying, so... Yeah, so, I mean, that's that's kind of what we got to talk about. I mean, generally, we start our podcast with uh, Q&A, question act, knock, knock, who's there? Fucking questions, bitch! Oh, yeah, that one. Uh, We only have one question this week, though, because uh, this week, you know, thank God, honestly, like, this was, of all the weeks for me to nearly die, this was a, a good week because we got a lot of questions out of the way. The season had kicked off for basketball. And so finally it was dying down just a little bit. You know, there was a lot less, you know, hubbub. And... I mean, compared to where we were at before the season started to where we are now, yeah, night and day. Before, when the season was getting ready to start, that draft season, like, we were just on Twitter and YouTube answering questions and everything left and right. Like, it's... we couldn't even keep up with it. Yeah, and it was, it was out of control. And that – possibly that's even what's killing me i don't know maybe that's why i almost died but uh so yeah we didn't we only got one question ryan's got it because i uh i'm i don't know because i don't have it how about that (laughs) just because you almost died and you're completely out of it yes we'll we'll fill you in on that weekend but we want to get we want to get the question answered first before we get into some story here yeah so Uh, this question was from Demarcus Anthony right. on our Twitter account. Can we he call says, him Boogie? Sure, because Demarcus. Yeah. Boogie, Boogie Anthony. Mello, I don't know. Boogie Mello. <laughs> Boogie Mello. Uh, anyways, he asked, Hey, when is your guys' next video and what is it? So we actually haven't put out a video in, what, over a week now? Oh my God, that's an eternity. 
It really is. Wow. It, it really is, and it's unacceptable. But then again, Halloween, we're Tom pretty much dying and coming back to life. So we we uh, we didn't do any videos. Uh, we don't have anything planned. Ryan, all right, so this would have normally been, right, our weekend to get together and record, obviously, a podcast, not over Skype. This is our first actual Skype podcast, so hopefully the quality is decent. So, again, I'm just talking on a shitty headphone mic. I couldn't get the blue mic we have set up right, so I'm sorry if my audio sounds like shit. Just fucking deal with it. Yeah, you sound fine on my end. We'll, we'll just see how it, how it sorts out. But, yeah, so this would be our weekend to work normally with your work schedule and my, uh, you know, failure as a husband child visitation schedule but we didn't get anything done because the few the few moments that we would have had to work i was in the hospital which we'll get to in a little bit later okay but we do have uh for for this guy boogie mellow we do actually have two videos in the can still and we're putting them up this week i'm going to try to post at least one of them today and since we're kind of limited on content for the next few days i think it makes sense to We'll space them out. We'll try to maybe we'll get a live broadcast in here. You know, I don't know. We'll figure something out for this week so it's not totally naked, and we can talk about hoops. We can talk about football. I know we've neglected football quite a bit lately, and we we really have. I mean, we're at that turning point in the season. You pretty much know what your teams are, or you know whether or not you're even going to keep playing, or whether you're going to go for the the trophy. And hey, and, you keep playing regardless of where you're at because that's like rule number one. A fantasy sports addicts anonymous. Well, all right. When I say keep playing, I mean, you know, are you going to keep making the terrible decisions you've made to this point? I.e., every pickup you make either gets injured or like your face explodes or. There's... There have been a lot of injuries. Well, yeah, that's the other thing we got to talk about at some point. Is just literally like, I I have teams where almost my entire team that I drafted is non-existent. Like all my star players injured, gone. Uh. And now it's like, what scrubs are left? How many handcuffs can I still find? You know, uh, I don't think I'm alone in that. This has been a weird year, football wise. So, we'll talk about some right. of that before, coming up. But... Before we get into that, let's answer Boogie Mellow's question. All right, sorry. What, what videos do we have on tap? We have a couple of good ones. We have a, a tanking strategy. It's not a strategy. It's frowned upon. Um, it is frowned upon, and I don't think we could say that enough. A lot of tension between Tom and I in this video, and the take that we actually have recorded is a lot more mellow than our like rehearsal, where I actually slapped you because I got that upset. Yeah, Ryan hit me again. Not that we haven't hit each other on set before, but yeah, this tanking is a it's a like let's just leave it. At, it's frowned upon. <laughs> I think that's I think it's an adequate explanation of you're, tanking. You're you're known in our fantasy circles as Tommy the Tank. Yeah, I'm not tanking. I'm rebuilding. By All right. tanking, I'm rebuilding aggressively and competitively and actively. So we all have different strategies. We're talking about how you rebuild a team. That's going to be an interesting video. Uh, the other video we've got lined up for you guys is a video about the end of season schedule. Uh, First of all, this is for basketball. I should preface that. Um, but yeah, so we've got the end of the basketball season schedule where basically uh, we're talking mostly about head-to-head leagues, which teams you should pay attention to who play the most games in those final weeks of the seasons or final weeks of the season for you know your playoff push. Maybe you're in the first, second round of the playoffs. You're looking at streaming options. Or maybe you could trade, sort of come into the trade deadline, get some of these guys that have more games. Uh, and those right, it's kind of a combination of like, you know, buy low, sell high, but mainly like players to not necessarily players, but players off of teams to add in the second half that are going to get you more games in your fantasy basketball playoff push. Because right. let's face it, let's be honest. A lot of times it really comes down to quantity over quality. Yeah, bulk bulk scoring, bulk minutes, just whatever. Uh, so if you got a combination of quality plus quantity, you can try to win your goddamn league. Yeah, always have more guys going. And again, this is mostly head-to-head, but always have more players going in a given day than your opponent. And this scheduling video 
brought to us by our, our good friend Brian, who's also a Woo. Let, take a moment, recognize Brian. Thank you, Brian. The sun chips are still delicious. We enjoyed them. And I think Ryan, you still got any sun chips around? They're still a bag lying around. All right, good. Save save them because I I like them. I like the sun chips. Brian um, found this information for us. You can find it pretty easily yourself. Sometimes Yahoo or ESPN will do an article about it. But since Brian just sort of had this already planned out, written out for us, and he gave it to us in a nice, you know, little spreadsheet type format, we're running with his info, and we'll actually post it to the website for you guys, just so you can get kind of a visualization of which teams play how many games in like the final three to four weeks of the season, and that way you can kind of make roster decisions accordingly. All right, so that's the question we had. What video? Why are you guys slacking off? And, right. Uh, I mean, again, we're addicts. We're not professionals. We do this on our free time. And let's be honest, sometimes life gets in the way of hobbies. Life sure got in the way for me this weekend. And so did we, life. We, it got in the way for let's you. Let's get into that, that a little bit. Like, how come we didn't get together this weekend? I got to go to the hospital. Oh, my God. Yeah. What happened? What happened? Oh, I thought you were watching a game or something. I thought you were shouting at sports. No, no, I was just... You went to the hospital. Oh, my I, God. I did, I did. Now, this is not an entirely unusual thing for me, uh, if you know no, me. I, I was going to say, like... <laughs> it, I was due. It's been about a year, literally exactly a year or something. So, yeah, I was due. Uh, I have a heart condition, born with this really shitty, fucked-up heart. So, I was... All right, I have a broken heart now. But I was born with a broken heart, generally. And uh, I think the two collided last week sometime. And all of a sudden, I couldn't breathe. I mean, I was breathing, but it was basically, you know, can't get enough air. I can't, <gasps> like, chase an air. I need more air. I'm like, give me some bigger lungs, you know? Like, all of a sudden, it was weird. And not a heavy smoker or anything. That wasn't it. And then all of a sudden, I'm starting to get weird chest pain. You know, I'm getting... I'm getting fatter suddenly. Like, literally, I was, like, bloating up and swelling. My feet are swollen. My hands are swollen. Face is swelling up. And I felt like shit for, like, two, three days. And I'm starting to kind of freak out. I, I'm used to a normal amount of heart, or not heart pain, but chest pain because of the, the heart surgeries I've had. Rib pain. Like, sp split you open like a fucking picket fence or something like that. Your your ribs are going to hurt no matter what. Right, that's going to cause some chest pains. But this was this was unusual chest pain for me, so I was getting a little freaked out. And then then my old my old buddy the nosebleeds came back. It's like a Japanese horror film. There's you know literally blood like flying blood, rocketing five six feet, and uh, so the combination of all those symptoms, I decided something's seriously fucking wrong with my heart. Like I thought I was having heart failure or some shit, and so I packed it up, you know, went to the ER. And uh, so they get me in right away. Chest pain's a big deal, and chest chest pain from a a person with a heart condition that's a big deal. And uh, you know, so they get me checked in. You know, they ask me all the questions, and uh, I'm freaking out still. So they give me some fucking drugs to calm me down, and I'm starting to feel pretty good, feeling a little better at that point. And uh, doctor comes back. By that time, my nosebleed had kind of finished on its own, and uh, so I'm telling him all the tests he's going to run and all the people he's got to call. You got to call this guy, my cardiologist. You got to call this guy, my pacemaker guy. You know, I'm like, we're going to get a rhino rocket for the nose. We're gonna, he's like, wait, you want you want me to put the balloon in your nose? I was like, do it now. <laughs> Let's get it done. And so if I sound nasal and I sound funny, basically I have, it's like a small tampon initially. They jam it way, way the fuck up into your sinus. Like, am I just practically touching your eyeball or your brain or something? And then they put a syringe on the end of it and fill it up with air. So you got skull fucked by a balloon? That's basically, yeah, I am being skull fucked by a balloon. And I got to leave that shit in there for a couple of days until I can go see an ear, nose, and throat doctor who will then cauterize the inside of my nose again. And cautery, obviously, is burning the blood vessels and... You know, if he burns enough of this shit, hopefully it'll, you know, I won't have to come back to get my nosebleeds treated for another six months or a year. Woo! Thanks for buying me that time. All right. All right, but so... You're, you're a bleeder, you get a bruise, and your fucking shit swells up ridiculous. Well, like, got, I've seen this shit. Yeah. I mean, I'm covered in them right now after that trip to the hospital. But so we got the, we got the rhino rocket in, nosebleeds stopped. I'm feeling better about that at least. 
So now it's time to run some tests. And in the meantime, we got to call doctors and you got to wait. So I'm wait. You know, you wait. You wait for a goddamn long time in the ER. And this was this was Halloween. This was it was interesting. Actually, I think I met my future ex-wife. Uh, some some Korean girl. Uh, the uh, the fire department brought her in. She didn't know who she was, where she was, or what she was doing. But she kept taking off her clothes and running around and dancing. And she had a lovely singing voice. I mean, literally, she had a great voice. And uh, they couldn't control her. They kept trying to tie her up. She kept running around. And they kept trying to ask her, you know, is there anybody we can call to help you? And she kept talking about her lover and her husband. And so they start freaking out, thinking two different guys are coming down to this hospital (laughs) to grab her. (laughs) So they're all trying to, like, they're trying to avoid anything. You know, they got a cop standing by in case there's, like, fisticuffs or something. And, uh, yeah, this, I mean, this chick was just nuts. I mean, I don't know if she was, like, she forgot to take her meds, off her meds kind of thing, or if she was, like, seriously like on some crazy fucking halloween drugs i don't know she she's korean they're they're just like that and honestly i think a korean would do you really well because they like to yell and fight and oh she was perfect i was watching i love i love the way she handled herself i mean she was pushing buttons pissing off the nursing staff they're laughing at her but she's like she just didn't give a shit you know like she's like screaming i gotta go pee and just like runs down the hall naked and like they're like worried she's gonna fall so like all these dudes are trying and then and then she's flirting with like every guy that walks by. She's hitting on the cops, on the firefighters. Like, she's like, "Hey, you want to go behind the curtain?" I mean, this girl was like, "Lao Yao in female form." I liked it. She was she was a hoot. She was fun to watch while I was sitting there freaking out. Okay, so, that's not too bad. No, I, was, I mean it was Halloween in the ER, and uh, you know I'm I was there. I was in that ER a long time. They kept taking me away for different tests. And you know there was there was a fight. Somebody got shot. Somebody had a broken leg. So there was some interesting shit. I mean, you don't get to see it all necessarily, but you can goddamn hear it all happening. And, uh, you know, Halloween in the ER, it was, it was interesting. So well, why do they keep you in there for so goddamn long? Well, obviously with my heart condition, you got to run some tests. you got to figure out what exactly is causing the lack of breathing or the heart pain, chest pain. And they did x-rays. I got, like, a whole bunch of x-rays. And because I have a pacemaker, they can't put me into an MRI machine. Otherwise, like all the me- yeah, all the metal in my body would rip out. I'd be like torn apart, like a fucking shrapnel bomb or something went off. Now that's a Japanese horror movie. Yeah, that ooh, that would be a good scene in a movie. Putting somebody with a pacemaker, or somebody with a bunch of metal in their body, in a fucking MRI machine. Oh, that's a cool death, dude. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I used to work in a hospital. I actually used to work at the hospital I was at, so I've seen their safety videos about like. You know, you don't bring metal anywhere near the MRI machine. And some of the, like, mishap videos are hilarious. Uh, luckily, they didn't include somebody in the machine. But, um, yeah, so, oh. you okay? I just got a little bit of drunken hiccups. All right. By now, by now it's, uh, it's, it's Sunday morning. I've been there since midday Saturday. I haven't had anything to eat. They wouldn't let me eat or drink because they thought I was going to have to go into some sort of emergency surgery. Right. And uh, you know they're asking me, do you want to eat? Want to eat anything? And fuck no, I don't want to eat. Like, and so much pain. Just give me some drugs, you know. Like, I'll eat some drugs. How about that? Well, you don't eat much anyways. Like those who've seen us, we're pretty goddamn skinny to begin with. Right. Uh, but then, then the nurse mentions, well, you know, you're you're scheduled for. You can have uh, a drink with each meal. And I was like, oh, like uh, I thought she's talking about like Mr. Pib or orange juice or something. And I was like, well, I guess I could go for like. I know. I was like, "Do you have any grapefruit juice?" She's like, "No, I mean, you know, like alcohol, alcohol with breakfast." Man, I love. Hell this. yeah! <laughs> Man, I love this hospital. What what kind of place is this? And uh, <laughs> so they they're asking about what what I want to drink. You know, do you want do you want vodka or do you want scotch? I was like, "Well, uh, what kind of scotch do you have?" Yeah, it turns out they got a couple kinds of scotch, and I actually couldn't believe it. I was really surprised. I actually turned it down the first time, uh, but by lunch I was like, "Sure, give me a scotch." But yeah, so I was I was trying to figure that out. That's weird, you know. And a lot of other things seemed kind of weird. I started noticing as they kept me, uh, you know, in the hospital. They introduce your nurse and your nurse's assistant and all the other people that might be coming and going into your room, so you feel comfortable with that. And uh, I had a sitter. They labeled me as having uh, a sitter. So a sitter. Yeah, I was confused. What's uh, what's the sitter all about? Am I am I being 
am I in trouble here? Is this like a kid thing? Uh, what's going on? And, you know, I didn't think much of it. I thought maybe they're just worried that, like, if something happens, he's, like, first line of defense or whatever and going to take care of me. But then my meal shows up, and it's on, like, a paper plate. And anybody who's ever been in a hospital, your food doesn't come on a paper plate. Uh, and there's no utensils. And uh, the, it was basically, like, a sponge spoon. Like, like literally, Ooh. yeah, it looked, it was, I don't even know how to describe it. It was like a, like kind of a hollowed out sponge with a spongy handle. And uh, I was like, you know, can I get a, can I get a fork over here or something? No, no, no. You you know, just use that. That's like your spoon. Okay. You know, so at that point, you know, eat my food. No big deal. I got to pee and dude follows me in there. And I'm thinking, no, oh, maybe it's just so I don't fall. You know, they know I'm on a lot of drugs. No, I found out what the sitter was. The sitter is the hospital's first line of defense for people who go fucking ape shit. So they put you in with the crazies on Suicide Watch? They put me in with the crazies on... So I was on Suicide Watch or Crazy Watch. And uh, they explained to me, you know, well, they must be some concern in your interview. And I remembered the interview. Did they, you know, are you going to hurt yourself? Are you going to hurt anybody else? I said no. So I'm like, how is this even possible? What it was, somebody offhandedly, I didn't realize what was going on. I'm doped up. Somebody asked me, like, if I was worried. I said, well, yeah, I'm probably worried here. I mean, I'm like, what if I could die here? You're talking about lung cancer or fucking blood clots in my lungs. But you know what? Like, fuck it. If I die, I die. And apparently they took that as, like, I want to die. I didn't say I wanted to die. I just said I didn't care if I fucking died. And I really don't. Like, I'm not afraid. This isn't, like, some cavalier silly like cowboy bullshit in all honesty like I have stared into the abyss enough times that like it's not something I'm concerned with it's not something uh oh I'm gonna die you know so whatever fuck it so anyways you know they got me on suicide watch they got me on crazy watch they got me lumped in with insane people now I was disappointed they had me with all the crazy people but where was my Korean girl (laughs) Like she was, I think they knew I was interested in that. They, they, I wanted to be her fucking roommate. Like, hey, <laughs> hey, bring that crazy over here. Let's have some crazy. You know what I mean? But yeah, I got the old fat lady who's like ramming her fucking hospital bed into the wall, trying to blast through the wall into my room. We got some guy like who had some double amputee guy just screaming all night long, help me, help me, like screaming help me, and he's screaming they're coming to get me. Like he just kept screaming really crazy shit. And I'm trying to explain, like, I I'm, I know I'm covered in blood, see, but I'm a good guy. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm giving them the whole garden gnome routine. Like, no, I'm a good guy. Uh, but they wouldn't take me off this fucking watch. So they wouldn't give me utensils to eat. They wouldn't, you know, I had some person following me everywhere I went. And I think at some point they realized I'm not crazy. I'm not actually, you know, they realized it was a mistake. But the other mistake they made was, you know, the booze. They don't normally give people booze in a hospital. But I guess somehow they decided, maybe they saw one of our videos or the podcast, all the beers stacked up. And they thought, well, this guy's going to withdraw from alcohol. And so they're offering me scotch at like every meal and shit. And, you know, hey, yeah, yeah, I'll take a scotch. I mean, I'm sorry. You're in a hospital, whether you need this scotch or not. Somebody offers you a scotch in a hospital. You say you yes. Take. Yes. You say yes. Okay. It's booze. You're in a hospital. Hospitals are scary, shitty places. Have a goddamn drink if you can. Why not? So, yeah. I so, thought... it sounds like you had a pretty fucking crazy-ass Halloween weekend that sucked donkey ball. Well, they wouldn't let me out. I thought I was ready to go at that point. They couldn't figure out what, what was wrong with my shit. I still felt bad, but, you know, at that point, I'm just ready to get out of there and go home. But then all of a sudden, magically, mid, mid-morning on Monday, oh, well, there was a mistake. You know, they, uh, the doctors, <laughs> what do you mean? There's mistake. Yeah. So we don't make mistakes. <laughs> we don't make mistakes. Uh, there's been a mistake. Yes. They, uh, they, they made a mistake. I was with the crazy people by accident, by mistake. Somebody screwed up. I don't know if they confused me with somebody else or they just realized they were wrong, but you know, I got this apology from the nurse, the, the charge nurse. And she's, you know, I'm so sorry. We had to keep you here an extra day. I'm t- tell that to my bank account. Tell that to my insurance, you know, like an extra day. Wow. So they finally let me go and they discharged me and now I'm out. Now I'm free. 
Just I, I thought I was going to have to be doing videos by myself, like Clint Eastwood style, with the chair next to me, <laughs> like talking to you like you were there, even though you're not. It, it probably almost came to that. So yeah, long story short, no videos. I almost died. Thankfully, I'm out of the hospital. We're back on the fucking the grind here for FSAA. I wish, I almost wish this had been a video just so people could see the goddamn, you know, skull fucking I've received from this balloon. <laughs> right. Obviously, life gets in the way of fantasy sports sometimes. But, but if you're a good fantasy sports manager, you take the necessary steps. Before I left my house to go to the hospital, do you know what I did? I set my lineups. I set, you know, 16 basketball teams worth of lineups. I set all my football. I set hockey teams. So I set everything for a couple days in advance, not knowing how, if I would be back or how long I would be gone. You know what I mean? I just, I didn't know what was going on. I was even preparing to send you my passwords in case I croaked. <laughs> you know what I mean? But hey, so well, that's, I mean, that's part of why I'm co-commissioned leagues and all that. In case Tommy dies. That's yeah. always, that's always the backstory in case I drop dead ryan's co-commission of all the leagues all right so uh let's talk a little about fantasy let's uh give our viewers some sort of resemblance of uh fantasy News. advice or whatnot like how many injuries did you have this weekend in football were you affected by any of that uh i have uh keenan allen in one league which okay. Sucks. He's got like a kidney issue. He had some sort of surgery today. Uh, there's no timetable for his return. He might actually be out for the season. Probably. I, I just saw that on Twitter. Um, but by and large, this week, not so bad. I mean, I lost Jamal Charles, which sucks. Okay. Um, you know, I got... Uh, does Bryant back, which is good. So, like, football-wise, like, the injury bug hasn't bit me as hard as it has other managers. Fair enough. Fair enough. My, mine just and looks like, like roster Yeah, we're, we're halfway through the football year. So, again, we kind of know where our teams are at, how we're looking. And, like, I'm, like, half and half, maybe more than half to half, but – uh Basically, I got teams where like I'm kicking ass first place, or I got teams where I'm dead last or close to it. <laughs> yeah, that's that's like kind of me. It's either you're doing pretty well or you're pretty fucked. I I don't know. I'm. I swear to God, we we need we need extra fantasy advice on this show, extra fo- fantasy football advice, anyways, because I don't know what it is. It, it doesn't matter what move I make. It's guaranteed to backfire for some reason. And then when they don't, it's like, how did that How did that work out? Uh, now, speaking of things working out, I don't know if you noticed in our experts league, we're moving on up. Another. All right. I, I didn't look at it this week yet. Another kick-ass week. All of our wait-and-see players, you know, we waited for Martavis Bryant coming off of a suspension. And we had, you know, Todd Gurley waiting for him to get healthy. So a lot of these like depth picks that were like hopefully we can get a boost mid season, we're now getting that mid season boost, and so we're jumping up. I mean we're in like goddamn dead last in this experts league, which is terrible showing for us. I mean so again we didn't follow the league settings, draft this league. We were just so, so excited. We were like woo wee yay experts. Well we were last in and it was a league we didn't know it was a weird format like. If you listen to our fucking podcast about this previously, like you've heard us talk about it before, but we're making a move. Yeah, it's nice. I mean, we're not we're not dead last anymore. We had you know second highest points total for I think second se- week in a row. Yeah, yeah, and I mean we're like we're putting up numbers now. So I mean you know if we can finish in the middle of the pack by the end of the season, I feel pretty good about that. Considering we're not I mean, writers I or experts. I love the fact that I got Todd Gurley in it because it's a keeper league, and oh, yeah. he's probably going to be the number one pick next year. He, yeah, he's been fucking spectacular. It's just ridiculous. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to take my work league down as long as my players perform and come to playoffs. If there's one one league to win, usually in any given year, you got to win your work league, right? I, I got to because again, I'm an addict, and these guys are like fantasy curious 
you got to show them what's up and then they'll think oh i gotta go to the website that, that guy knows what he's doing <laughs> yeah absolutely we, we sure do oh, so but, has there been any uh during all this time have you made any basketball moves or anything uh you know i've actually because I, I didn't have computer access in the hospital uh until the very end uh i didn't make probably as many of the basketball moves as I might have. I've gotten a lot of trade offers. I got a lot of bullshit here too from you, man. What the fuck's up with that? Hey, I, I, I'm taking it easy on you. Like, I haven't even talked about our fucking side bets where I beat you three weeks. Or... I, didn't, I didn't make any side bets. I didn't shake on a side bet. I didn't agree to a side bet. So I don't know what the fuck you people are talking about side bets. Especially on the first... There, there, there was talk of side bets in our live podcast that has now since been deleted. Me and Tom played each other in three different leagues, and I beat him in all three leagues, and he's got to have some sort of retribution. All right, I'm looking at a trade offer right now in this in the exact this actual league I'm talking about. Uh, people really want my Kawhi Leonard, obviously. Uh, so I've been offered Damian Lillard and Tyson Chandler for... Uh, Kawhi Leonard and Jonas Valanciunas, which obviously I'm not going to take that. No, no, not with JV involved. Yeah, I just traded for Valanciunas, so I'm not trading him. I just got him. What was your JV trade? I traded, uh, uh, what's his name? Alfred Payton. I traded Alfred Payton for Jonas Valanciunas. Straight up? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I'm happy with it. Uh, oh, here, here's a real dog shit offer. Uh, eh, well, there's a first pick involved, so it's not as awful. But uh, Paul Millsap and Nemanja Bielica, round one pick for Kawhi Leonard, and like my last pick. Still dog shit. Yeah, and this is this guy's one of the better teams in the league, so his pick sucks. And I mean, come on, Paul Millsap. Uh, yeah, we're Kawhi Leonard. Like again, you don't move a fucking first round pick cheap. No, I mean this guy's got. He has thing. Oh, this that's actually the guy I traded uh, Peyton to. Okay. I mean, he's got. If I could do like a combo of like Eric Bledsoe and Blake Griffin, I might move. But even then, I don't know. How do you move Kawhi? I mean, he's clearly the future of San Antonio, and look how goddamn delicious he's been so far. I mean, mm, holy smokes! Well, and uh, my my dynasty league that I took over from Caius, I was offered LeBron James for Kawhi Leonard. And I turned that down. Right. That's... Like, I I thought about it, like, redraft leagues. Like, I might take LeBron, but even at this point, I don't think I would just because LeBron's turning 31. Uh, he has a shit ton of miles on him, and I, I just don't know if he's going to be rusting towards the end of the year once Cleveland has that number one spot locked up and, even if they don't, they want him to be healthy for the playoffs. Yeah, he, they need him. I mean, if there's any injuries down the stretch, you know, they need him to be ready to roll. So I would assume Cleveland's, you know, going to be taking it easy with. If he if he's not resting, he's playing limited minutes down the stretch. That's pretty. Yeah, I mean, they said that you know he said that he plans on playing all 82 games. I don't believe it. I think that's just what he has to say. Yeah. Because, again, I don't think that Cleveland or LeBron really gives a shit whether or not they got number one seed. No, they're like they're like the Spurs. They don't need it. It doesn't matter. Absolutely. Like, they'll get through any goddamn team in the West, in the East regardless of their playoff seed. Right. So that, that worries me. And as much as I love LeBron, especially since I got my punting strategy – I just couldn't move fucking Kawhi for him. No. I I don't think anybody can move Kawhi for anything at this point. And actually, in your league, I, I think I'll go ahead and offer LeBron for Kawhi because my league, I have Kawhi. Your league, I have LeBron. Okay. So I think in your league, I'll go ahead and offer LeBron for Kawhi and see if I can get it. Fair enough. Now, remember, in my league, I gave up Kawhi for a first-round pick last year. That became... Uh, it was fucking Wiggins, right? Yeah, it was Wiggins. Wiggins. So that That's was so fucking nuts, and I thought it was nuts at the goddamn time. No, but I like the other manager I made the deal with. He was new to the league. It was one of those things. We've, we've done this in the past where 
if you're bringing into a, a bad team and you got a good manager, you want to keep them happy. You throw them a bone, kind of give them a nice a patty cake trade, not necessarily shenanigans, but you know, give them give them a little something that they want to be in the league, they want to stick around, they want to play your league, and it's a good it's good business, I think. And the other thing is, I brought in this guy from one of your leagues, and you told me he's a notorious notoriously hard bargainer. Uh, makes a lot of trades, but when he does, he makes. I mean, he squeezes every fucking. No, honestly, like this guy Pooks. Yeah. He's like, he, he's fucking great. Like he's just running over this other dynasty league I've been in. Like he's almost got a league breaking team. His team is that good. Like, yeah, I'm his only threat, but like he's a damn good manager. Yeah. Which is why I brought him into your league. Fair enough. Fair enough, and I mean I've. I'm glad to have him. Dude drives a hard bargain, but that's again. He knows what I was after. He knows what his pick was. He knew he was giving up Andrew Wiggins, and Andrew Wiggins' potential. So he wants to account for that, and that's that's a smart manager. I I approve of what he's done. So, you know, I didn't mind. Absolutely. I think the big pickup this weekend so far. Now, this is funny because I did have him in that that uh, that deep ass roto keeper league. Uh, I dropped Evan Fournier. And okay. he looks like he's kind of the pickup right now. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, he, he's getting uh, the minutes, which is obviously key. I'm just surprised that he is. I didn't expect that. I don't think anybody expected that in Orlando, did they? Not necessarily, but again, there's enough minutes to go around at the two and the three where, you know, he can still get 25 minutes. Yeah, yeah. I'm just, you know, especially when they drafted uh, Hizonia, I just, I, I really sort of thought, dude would be an afterthought. But that's yeah, but you know, uh, Scott Skiles, he never likes to play his rookies. No, that's that's also true. Uh, let's look in uh, our league. Is there anything going on in our our FSWA leagues? No, I mean it's pretty basic. I mean we got the, you know. CJ Miles and Matthew Della Vadova is a, and there's it, you know, Evan Fournier. Now Amir Johnson, I that's totally yeah, that's a Joe pick for sure. <laughs> yeah. That's the kind of shit Joe loves to pick up and like hot potato. You know what I mean? He'll pick up an Amir Johnson, you know, ride him for everything he's worth or just trade him when he's hot kind of thing. But, I mean, if uh, Willie Cauley Stein is available in any league, go ahead and add him. Okay. As uh, Demarcus Cousin, Boogie's biggest fan, like, are you worried about his injury? When I hear Achilles, I start thinking guys like Brooke Lopez and Yao Ming. Now he's not, he's not nearly as, uh, I don't know, fragile or as stocky and beefy i mean he's stocky yeah but he's not... see all right here's the yahoo update the marcus cousin will not play the next two games uh confirms early report cousins had some treatment on monday and there's also a chance he misses more than two games too so you know he's gonna miss a few games doesn't seem like it's anything too serious but again those Achilles injuries are kind of tricky. Yeah, that does that doesn't sound doesn't sound terrible. It's not like a torn Achilles or anything like that. No, nothing like that. But still. But even even with the healthy cousins, like Cauley Stein, still has value. Oh yeah, oh yeah, good defensive center. You know, he's not going to hurt you in any way. And again, the Kings. You know, I noticed uh, Kufos has been getting picked up a little bit too. So I think people are speculating oh, I think that's on. Good. Uh, cousins injury. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think people are kind of speculating and making one or two day pickups. And now, see, this is why we should be playing some fucking daily fantasy. I don't know why it's still goddamn illegal, but well, at least again, where we leave. I'm working on trying to get my credit card set to my brother-in-law's address in New York, so I can play daily leagues. So you need basically what you need is you need to commit wire fraud to play fantasy sports in Arizona. I don't know if it's wire fraud. Is that what it is if I'm like I, falsifying my address? I I don't know. But it sounds it sounds good. Let's call it wire fraud just because it sounds like you might be committing wire fraud. I, I don't actually know if it's wire fraud, but it does sound 
it's definitely shady. I mean, if you have to break laws in your own state to like play daily fantasy and you have to do crazy shit like that, it's got to be some kind of illegal, right? Well, I mean, I got to be able to fucking play daily leagues just so we can talk about it. Like, the loss of income. It is. I mean, the state of Arizona is actually costing us money. They're they're losing money for us. We're not able to expand our business model by discussing daily fantasy. We're not able to, like... Because now that, like, pre-draft and all this fantasy shit, like, yeah, we can talk about, like, waiver wire ads and all that shit, but there's just such... <laughs> a short life term to any of this shit. What I'd like to know is if anybody in our audience does play daily fantasy and where you live, where you play it, you know, like, uh, if people out there that check out our stuff, if they're playing daily fantasy, let us know. Um, I'd be curious to know what your experience is with it, how much you play, you know, you feel competitive enough that you're winning money or you, you doing well at it? Because again, I, I just feel so fucking left out in the cold and the rain here, you know? It sucks. Absolutely. It sucks living in a state where you can't play daily. Uh, it really just, you know, you know, it's funny when I was in the hospital, I was talking to one of these uh, nurses about it, you know, dudes talking about, you know, fantasy football and, you know, we're just kind of bullshit. And, and he's like, Oh, do you play that? You know, those daily, the DraftKings and all that. And he didn't, he didn't realize that it was illegal in Arizona, you know? And he thought he's like, well, is it just a scam? Is it just like a gambling thing? And I actually had to set him straight. I was, you know, actually it's federally allowed. It's the law is very specific that fantasy sports is a skill, not gambling. Uh, any money made on it is literally just, it's kind of like investing, you know, I mean, is, is playing the stock market gambling or is it somewhat of an investment skill? Right. Well, then what you know? Right. Right. Exactly. And so I think they're sort of similar in that regard. So I kind of equated it to him that way, and he didn't realize it was against the law. And he actually, he actually went and signed the petition. I think I told <laughs> I told him about it. And I think he went and signed it because he, right. you know. But it's funny how many people that don't play think it's just like a scam or, you know, it's bogus, and it's not. It really isn't. And God damn it! I mean, I'm... obviously, there's just so many like scams and that shit that, like, yeah, if you don't know, that's gonna be like first thing you equate it to, like, oh, it's a bunch of bullshit. Well, and I mean, the number one indicator that daily fantasy sports, especially stuff like DraftKings and FanDuel, uh, you can tell they're legit because all four major sports have some measure of investment with them. They, they're either sponsored by or have direct promotions. Uh, yeah. a, lot, a lot of the teams individually are sponsored by and have naming rights with, with DraftKings and FanDuel. You know, the NBA itself like wholeheartedly, even major league baseball, they all wholeheartedly endorse daily fantasy sports because it's not only is it a great way to build their brand, uh, and you know, expand revenue potentials for not only the leagues and the players, but it's also a great, uh, data tool, you know, for analyzing metrics and like, you know, fan preferences, things like that. So a lot of the numbers that FanDuel DraftKings can accumulate the leagues want those numbers for their own research purposes. So right. it's, it's a great, great marketing tool. And honestly, it's just a great, it's one more way for fans to become involved in the game. It was like Adam Silver was saying on opening night, you know, 90 to 99% or whatever of their audience has never, or is not ever able to go see a live basketball event. And they experience basketball through, you know, live streams or through, you know, ESPN, TNT, and through fantasy sports. And so it's just one more way for them to engage, you know, fan interests and for fans to get to know the league and the league's players. And it's really just sort of like this great thing for everybody. But if you happen to live in one of these States with like archaic gambling laws where like, you know, God says no gambling, or in our case, the state says don't take our revenue away because we have to change casino laws. You can't play and it sucks. And so we're just sort of left out. It really does, and I know I've said this before, but I'm actually working on it to where I'll be playing daily fantasy sports before too much longer. Thank God, because we, like, I just want to talk about it. You can, you'll play, I'll live vicariously through you, maybe you can, uh... Yeah, you'll give me your lineup advice and all that shit. Yeah, and that, I, I... So, hopefully by our next podcast, actually, um... Ryan's able to I'll... break the law. Yeah, hopefully we can start breaking laws by then. And 
we can tell you about that process. We can tell you about, you know, ideal daily fantasy lineups. I mean, that's, that's a lot of money out there. There's a lot of people making a lot of money on these daily fantasy lineup advice things. You know, you sign up for their service and they email you a roster every day. And it's like the ideal roster. And, you know, these, these gurus are their sites where they're rated as far as like accuracy. So you can see, you know, who's going to win you the most money and right guys. And hopefully not only will I be winning other people money, I'll be winning money myself. Man, it would be great. That's the plan. All right, so hopefully, go break the law, Ryan. Yep. And uh, we'll 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 tell you all about it. Sorry, we've been a little uh, fucking behind on material, but <laughs> thankfully basketball season started. Things have died down. If you want to talk about roster advice or you know trades or any kind of lineup maneuvers, we're always around for that. Hit us up. If you have any specific video requests, we're happy to take them. Maybe we can do you know some comedic shit the side bets thing will happen i'm just not fucking doing a goddamn side bet on the first week of the season you just don't want to get fucking three pies to the face i'm not gonna get any pies to the face I'm you're, not... you're bitching out that's all it is no it's okay. not all right dude i have a goddamn balloon dick in my fucking skull right now. you didn't last week here's the thing I'm not betting on the first fucking week of the season in which it's a short week and teams aren't even playing an even number of games. All right? Absolutely you are. No way. I didn't agree to any of that shit. I never would. Anybody else out there, don't ever make side bets or bullshit bets on the first week of the season. Especially... Just, we were playing in the first week. Like, what, we're going to wait fucking three months until we can do another side bet? No, one like, week. Let's get, let's get a full... Thing. Let's get a full week. It's like trying to make a bet during the goddamn All-Star week, okay? No, the first week isn't like that. Yes, it is. Bullshit. It's exactly like that. It's exactly no, it's like not. that. Most teams have, like, last week, most teams played their first game, like, Thursday. Wednesday or Thursday. All right, you want me to go and look and see who had how many games played and fucking count all that shit up? Because I will. Yeah, count it up. We'll hear about it next week. All right, Tom, I got to go to bed. Uh, Lead us out with the fucking serenity prayer. All right, fantasy gods, please grant me the serenity to set my ideal lineups. The courage to add drop aggressively, which I need to go do. And take pie to the face. No, fuck you and your pie to the face. Uh, Also, make good trades, which, you know, we've already been doing this this season so far, and we're going to continue to do. And, yes, all right, next week. This week, whatever. I'll do I'll do betting, just not the first week of the season, last week of the season, unless it's a finals match. We don't play or, each other for another like three goddamn months. Boo hoo. Make it with whoever you're playing. I did not ever agree to a goddamn whatever, fucking side whatever. bet. We'll make a side bet for the next time we play. In the meantime, if anybody else wants side bets, we'll make them. Just not during goddamn all star week or the first week of the season. I'm a How- I'm just playing the Tony LaRusa thing. It's the first week of the season. I'm just I'm sorry, I don't it's the first week of the season. Okay? I'm not I'm I you don't make a bet about how your team's gonna out what the team outcome is gonna be the first week of the season. You think I'm crazy? Let us know. Uh check out our website anytime, fantasysportsaddicts.com. Hit us up on Twitter at letter F, letter S, the word double, letter A at FS double A. And uh, remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Give us a thumbs up. Oh. Also, also, again, you know, any questions, any comments, hit us up on Twitter. Just in the meantime, let's let's drum up some conversation. It's been quiet, mm. but Ryan and I are still around. We're here to talk anytime, and as long as I'm still alive, anyways. I still got like fifty thousand doctor's appointments this week, but we'll be here. We're ready and to go. And some dies, all talk to a chair and pretend it's Tom. Yeah, I'll, my my fantasy advice is probably just about as good as an empty chair as anyways. <laughs> the way you yeah. think it is, ass clown. Thank you for sticking around. Thank you for listening to this craziness. And uh, stay tuned for the, the tanking video and the season schedule video. Alright. Alright. Later.